we will um, go ahead and let Jeff give that presentation. And well, thank you, Monica, and uh, we'll move ahead with with weather here uh, and talk about well, obviously, moisture and the lack of it is the major issue for many people in the state. There are some exceptions to that. We'll look at that in a moment, but there's some new new forecast information. I think that's somewhat encouraging, somewhat hopeful for some some changes. And I'll I'll get to that in a second. For the past week, looking in review. For most of the state, our temperatures averaged out. It's, it's it's sort of hard to believe we have cooler than normal than warmer than normal. Uh, we've been warm recently, but it averaged out pretty close to the climatological means. On the left-hand side, you can see that. A couple spots a degree or two below, a couple in the far north that were a degree or two above. So close to normal. The pattern we've had with, though, with our degree day accumulation beginning on the 1st of May on the right-hand side, that pattern we've seen the whole growing season. And that is uh, a little bit of a deficit in the far northern part of the state in the in upper Michigan and a little bit of a surplus especially as we get down towards the Indiana and Ohio state lines there we've got a couple hundred units so a few calendar days ahead of normal in the far south a couple behind at the far uh, in the far northern part of the state uh, more importantly moving here to moisture uh, and looking at the rainfall over the last week it really depended on where you were but for most of the state it was another drier than normal week as, as we've heard uh, many comments made about that here on the left hand side a uh, couple of things i think that are worth noting and, and this does this does not include some of the rainfall we saw yesterday which was uh, it was it was tempting and it was a uh, it was one of those things wishful thinking the sky darkened but it was it was really scattered uh, and the amounts uh, really had to look to find anything significant. Most places got a uh, trace or half an, or uh, a few hundreds of an inch uh, or not not much. But this goes through yesterday morning, uh, the week before that. And you can see across the southern part of the state, especially the southern two tiers of counties here, we picked up meaningful and really significant rain. And that, that really has a, been a game changer for that part of, uh, again, I would say the state. In some cases, more than two inches fell over the last week. So conditions there are very different in many instances than they are further north. And as you do move north, you can see large portions of the northern half of lower Michigan, little or no precipitation. Uh, that's also That was also true for portions of, of upper Michigan as well. So again, it was it just depended on where you were. Right-hand side here, these are two-month totals. So this is uh, the, basically the last two months from late May through June and uh, July up to present. And this is expressed in terms of a percent of normal. And this, this tells the story of, of a lot of what we uh, are currently seeing or dealing with. All of these yellow and brown colors here suggest are indicating deficits. In some cases, they're less than half of normal. In terms of actual water, uh, what are we dealing with here? In most of this area here, from northern lower down into central lower, especially east central lower, we're dealing with deficits on the order of about two to four inches. And remember that uh, during the warm season, where we see most of our precipitation annually, we're, we're, we should be seeing three, three and a half inches of rain normally in a given month. So for most of these places, this is, this is again indicating where, where we've missed a whole month worth of, uh, of precipitation. Driest areas of the state, though, uh, in terms of all the numbers here, an area of central lower eastward into east central into the thumb. That that's the area that has had the uh, the largest deviation or departure from normal. But depending on the soil types, uh, we have areas further north and northern lower with coarse textured soils that are suffering from fairly significant moisture stress at this point, just because they hold less water. Uh, move into that here just, and I don't wanna belabor this, be, again, everyone can look outside and see, but current soil moisture conditions, this, this graphic here is indicating water in the top meter, so the top three feet approximately of the soil profile. And uh, again, I think this really identifies the area fairly well in Michigan. Central lower is really where the, the dryness is most acute, especially, in the thumb, uh, in portions of the Saginaw Valley, you can see the very dark colors here, indicating that the dryness now at this point in time is fairly significant in terms of uh, historical standards and where we've been in the past. On the right-hand side here, I have the uh, Evaporative Drought Demand Index, or EDI, uh, is the acronym used here. The current values up on the top, and you can see Michigan has really gone quickly into uh, drought-type conditions, again, especially over central and northern lower Michigan. 
the graphic on the bottom is the change in the last month of this index. And the other the other issue here is it, it's developed very rapidly. I, I, I showed you the two month precip total, but the symptoms and the, the with the lack of water here have really accelerated over the last few months or last few weeks, sorry. And you can see that here clearly with the browns indicating a, a drop in at least one category. Uh, and, and again, in some cases now we are seeing drought conditions moderate, even to some, some severe drought on, on droughty soils. The drought monitor, the latest version that we have, there'll be a new one here a little bit later this morning, about 40% of Michigan now by area is in an abnormally dry category, most of it in a D0, abnormally dry. But we do have some D1, moderate drought, right in the middle of the uh, lower peninsula, Gratiot County and, and surrounding counties, if you, you want to get down to the specifics. But it also extends again over into uh, the northern thumb. And uh, the, I'm sure we will see some probably some expansion in that here as the, uh, the new map is issued today. So uh, one last thing, too, about this. Michigan's not alone in this, and you can see a lot of other areas of the Corn Belt, uh, notably here to our south across uh, east central Illinois, portions of central Indiana, but also to our west, out over portions of the upper Missouri Valley and the middle Missouri Valley here, uh, eastern Nebraska, western Iowa, southern Minnesota. These are all areas uh, that, that are, are suffering from lack of water. And uh, again, I think uh, several people mentioned this, Kurt uh, and Manny. We are now in uh, sensitive stages, especially for corn, as we, we come into silk pollination. Uh, and the water is really, really important at this point in time. And, and now I, I want to shift to the forecast because I think there is some hope here for something different that hopefully will help with, uh, at least as for some, people, some lucky people, uh, it will make a difference. In our forecast this morning, we had a, a cold front, fairly strong cold front for the time of the year, and a strong area of low pressure up here in Ontario moved past the state yesterday, and that's what caused all the, well, the, the scattered or isolated showers along with the, the very windy conditions. Uh, that front has gone beyond us, and it really wasn't much of, there's not much cold air. It's another really mild morning across much of Michigan with uh, low temperatures only in the upper 60s, even low 70s, which is at least 10 to 15 degrees above normal. There's another front though, out to our west, and that will come through here later today. Uh, on the radar uh, time lapse here over the last hour, you can see that there's not much there, but note off here in the far uh, left-hand side of this graphic, there's a new cluster of thunderstorms out over southwest Minnesota, western Wisconsin. There's a little upper air disturbance with that, along with this front, and that will probably move through, that will, that will move through southern lower Michigan here later this afternoon. We might see a few scattered showers with that, but as we've seen so much over the last couple of weeks, that will be the exception rather than the rule. And a few lucky people may pick up a tenth of an inch, but many people will remain dry. Other than that, we are looking at another sunny, fair, windy day. The same for tomorrow, high temperatures, mid to upper 80s once again, which will mean a little bit higher than normal uh, PET rates for the next couple of days. Uh, here's the map for this evening. I added this here just to show you. They actually do, uh, the National Weather Service here and there, and their progs uh, actually do, does have a little bit of that shower activity with that, that system that's now out, out over Minnesota, Wisconsin, but uh, 20, maybe 30% at best chance most people will remain dry. By tomorrow morning, you can see that frontal, that system moves off to our east, another pretty much a carbon copy type of day. Once again, uh, could see some temperatures during the day approaching 90, especially with the dry surfaces here, but uh, again, mostly sunny skies, uh, very, very strong. Now, for the change, what comes after this? By Saturday, you can see, for, and they've actually drawn in here a lot of green. Uh, and that's not just a good MSU thing. That, that actually, there's a system, the next weather system moving in here for the weekend, I think does have maybe some of the best promise for widespread precip we've had in at least a couple of weeks. I, and I think it's a little exaggerated here. We will likely see increasing clouds for most of the state during the day on Saturday. The real chance for significant precip comes Saturday night and Sunday. That's that's And that'll be collectively all of this sort of diffuse area of low pressure along with the frontal boundary that will push from west to east across the state and probably lead to a couple rounds of showers and thunderstorms. So again, the first one likely will be Saturday night and then another on Sunday. Uh, and the again, the, the 
numerical weather guidance here is pretty consistent with this and there will be there the other the other important thing is that what we've lacked so many times with these weather systems there's no water vapor there's no moisture for them to work with this one will have some gulf of mexico moisture so one thing you will notice on saturday is an increase in humidity you'll be able to tell it high temperatures once again up uh, in the 80s to near 90 but in with increasing clouds and that should do i think the trick uh how much rain well i look at put a couple of uh, of images up here here's the actual surface map as of sunday morning you can see that whole basically frontal boundary pushing in on sunday but uh precipitation probabilities up here above 80 percent we haven't seen that for a while across the state best chances are the greatest greatest probabilities of precip across northern and central lower I mentioned central lower here is an important place for uh precip deficits and then how much this is the uh forecast precipitation amounts over the 24-hour period and you can see here solid quarter to half inch amounts i think we could do better than that too so uh curd and a couple other people mentioned boy it would make a difference just to pick up at least a quarter of an inch this is our this is really our, our best chance we've had in some time uh saturday and sunday so looking more and more optimistic that this will happen over the weekend at least and of course that's not going to end the issue of dryness but at least it will put a temporary uh, or help things on a temporary basis for the entire week now after the precip chances here this weekend we will see drier conditions once again and cooler conditions early next week monday and tuesday and then another weather system on wednesday and that brings us into the medium range because there have been significant changes in that here over the last several days and i think they're, they're they're good changes i think are more helpful changes but you can see for precept totals for the week and this it doesn't even look like it's, we're looking at the same maps as we we did last week but they have over an inch of of rainfall this is the combination from this weekend and plus what is expected to fall on wednesday uh again two two significant systems and so we could end up with a fairly good rainfall total here for the upcoming week potential evapotranspiration rates given the warm temperatures over the next few days will be at or a little bit above normal about two tenths 21 hundredths 22 hundredths maybe in the south a little bit less than that in the far north but still moving along at a fairly good clip if if the water were available of course in many places it's not but this is what could evaporate if the water were available now finally moving this uh, this is another major i think take home for our forecast because for the last couple of days it has changed the big change is uh the jet stream pattern over north america and this big ridge that we've had parked over much of of the western portion of north america uh, and led to heat and, and our dry pattern here you can see the axis of that ridge has the forecast has shifted out to the west out over the eastern pacific and that's a big deal that's a major deal for us because it allows really more troughiness over the eastern part of north america including the great lakes region and that is uh, that's a significant change for us because it pushes most of the at least the most intense heat to our south it also provides many more frequent chances for precipitation even though it's northwesterly flow aloft there will be more chances more frontal passages just more chances for precip and it actually for the you know first time in a while it actually brings above normal precipitation back into the midwest note that that's not just for michigan it's also for other portions of the corn belt that also are in some issues for lack of water so that's a that's another marketing factor everybody needs water here in in our part of the world uh and it looks like this may be this pattern may do uh, may bring that eight to 14 day outlook here for the first few days of, in, of of august is essentially the same thing so it's it's a moderation of temperatures down to near normal levels maybe even a little cooler than normal in the north but more importantly more chances for rain and maybe even some above normal precipitation totals that's we're watching and to uh, one last thing about that most of the the different forecast model families the one from the us uh the european uh, union uh forecast they're they're all suggesting similar things so that's good the 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 not as uh the lack of confidence is a little bit in terms of the timing of this we've only seen this change of this pattern really for the last couple of days it would be nice to have a couple more forecast cycles say the same thing hopefully they will but it does again it does indicate a change at least for the end of july 
and August to something a little cooler and wetter than where we've been. So that's a, that's an important one. So I'll end there and and say again, we we while the short term is expected to be more of the same, uh, there are there are certainly changes in the in the forecast guidance beginning this weekend, and then maybe from next week on into at least early uh, August. And I'll stop there and see if anybody might have any questions here. Thanks.